Hi members. We saw at the end of last week that the quality advice review, the final report that Michelle Levy handed to government in December last year, was finally released to the public so that we could all have a look at what the recommendations were. There's been a lot of conversation about some of the good recommendations, some of the recommendations that have everybody worried. So we just wanted to quickly run you through what the intent of the review was again, what the recommendations are, and how they might affect you and your clients. What's really critical to remember, though, is that the, the core of this inquiry was to helping consumers have better outcomes in terms of the financial services and financial products that they want. And the idea is to make financial advice more accessible and more affordable for more Australians. Not all consumers have a need for complex, complex and complete financial advice. Many just have basic questions about the strategies and products that are going to best help them achieve the outcomes that they need. We need to consider that in the context of this report and the context of the current environment that financial planners operate, there are 25 million Australians and there's only 16,000 financial planners. That's too few financial planners to provide advice to everybody in the way that they may need it. And not all Australians want or need financial advice from a financial planner, despite the benefits that we all know that they would have if they did use your services and did take up the advice that you provided to them. So the context of the report, as we said, is that the law should encourage all financial advice providers to provide advice in a way that is safe, serves the interest of consumers, and is far more accessible to consumers than what it is today. When Michelle Levy looked at the current uh, framework under which financial advice is provided, she has taken on all the views of the profession. The regulatory framework is complex, it's difficult to understand, it's really difficult to comply with. It's an impediment for consumers being able to access affordable financial advice. It's accumulated in a rapid succession over a short period of time, and it's been done in a patchy law-making way that has made it really difficult for everyone to understand what their obligations are. It's incoherent. It's not plainly worded. In short, it is difficult for everyone to comply with in a professional way. So at a high level, what these recommendations are aiming to achieve is to treat more financial product advice as personal advice which I think all is something that all of us have been looking for and talking about. We've been concerned about some advice and some services that are being provided that aren't necessarily captured in the same way that we need to provide advice as professionals. She's proposed that all advice that's provided to consumers should be of a good standard. That makes sense, and it makes sense that advice should be fit for purpose for which it's given, and it should be good in all circumstances. She has proposed, though, that there should be two types of advice providers and two sets of requirements for providing advice to retail clients so that there are laws under which we operate as relevant providers and those should be looked at and those should be reviewed and those should be simplified and make it easier for you to provide the professional and complete and complex services that you provide to clients. But there should also be a form of advice provided by non-relevant providers who have additional protections in place and additional requirements in place that sit more with the AFSL than with the individual advice provider so that consumers can have basic and simple questions around their financial products and their circumstances answered in a quick and efficient way. So as I noted, Michelle has understood a lot of the frustrations and pain points that we have in providing advice to our clients. So what she said is that professional financial advice providers, professional financial planners should have a simpler regime under which to provide advice. They should have a personal duty to provide advice that is good advice. There should be a new, more general statutory fiduciary duty, which we think you'd be able to comply with by complying with the code of ethics that you already comply with. And you should need to meet professional and education standards, which is what we are all in the process of doing now. In doing this, she also has proposed that a number of the laws and regulations that have been frustrating us for a long time should be simplified. 
So it should be easier for you to provide advice to clients by transforming disclosure laws. You should be asking yourselves and you should be asking your clients what advice they would like to receive and what advice you should be providing them. SOAs and ROAs would be replaced by more complete record keeping obligations and providing written advice on request of the client. Now, written advice has a legal definition and it basically means anything that can be copied and reproduced on an ongoing basis. So video would be a written document and would be written advice. Audio files would also be could also be written advice. Diagrams and mind maps of the advice can also be considered to be written advice. The point is the client, if they would like a copy, can request a copy and you can provide it to them. But it doesn't have to be these 80 to 100 page SOAs and ROAs and everything that we do at the moment. FSGs could be made available on websites rather than being provided to clients. Fee disclosure statements would be abolished. Ongoing fee arrangements and fee consents from products should be created into a single form that a single form could be signed by the client irrespective of the number of the products that they uh, uh, you have recommended for them and those fees can be collected through that one form. We're also working on this behind the scenes with the superannuation funds and FSC uh, to try and create something and, and have the profession lead what the requirement should be rather than have the law dictate what it should be. Uh, fees should be able to be deducted from superannuation funds with a, without a lot of the rigmarole that's sitting there at the moment and the design and distribution obligation should be removed for financial planners. It doesn't make sense for financial planners to have reporting obligations. It doesn't make sense for us to have complaints obligations and so a lot of this would be removed. There were some recommendations around the life insurance review. Uh, this was something that was in the terms of reference that Michelle had to deal with. And so she's recommended that the life insurance framework should be maintained. The existing 60% upfront commission, 20% ongoing commission and two year court law back should be maintained. And client consent requirements should be one off at the beginning when the product is, is uh, recommended and implemented and disclosure of commissions should take place at that time as well. She's recommended that there be increased protections for wholesale clients. This has been an ongoing concern for the FPA and, and I know for a lot of you as members. And it would require a higher level of consent and more proof that somebody can be treated as a wholesale client. She has obviously made recommendations around non-relevant providers. And the reason for this is that at the moment, there is problems with products providing advice where they're trying to provide general advice or factual information. And clients really just want their questions answered about whether or not they're making the right decision for themselves around financial products. And so she's recommended that a framework be created that allows this to happen. The report speaks about what the outcome should be, but I think what's missing is that the government is unlikely to move on this. If there's not appropriate education requirements, if there's not appropriate conduct requirements, if there's not appropriate disclosure requirements, and if there's not appropriate requirements to ensure that the advice is good for the client. And these are the things that we'd be working through with the government as they look to implement these recommendations. There'll be a whole bunch of new consumer protections that would apply to non-relevant providers Licensees will have to ensure that they continue to act efficiently, honestly, and fairly. Recommendations that are made by products would have to comply with the design and distribution obligations and ensure that any answers are within the target market determinations that the products have set. TMDs will require that non-relevant providers would take, have to take reasonable steps to ensure that the recommendations are consistent with the TMD. Superannuation funds have to act in the best financial interest of their members. There is a there would be a ban on unsolicited hawking of financial products and some extension of the laws that, that sit there at the moment around hawking. They would have breach reporting obligations and there would be significant penalties for breaching the law. There would be additional consumer protections uh, in terms of the removal of some of the conflicted remuneration exemptions that currently apply around financial products and basic banking products and general insurance products and consumer products. Uh, credit products that sit there at the moment, those would all be removed and would 
move in line with the conflict and remuneration rules around investment products to ensure that there are better consumer protections from products pushing pushing their products. We have some concern, obviously. Some of these new laws have yet to be fully tested. And is um, do the recommendations place too much faith in the laws as a deterrent for product providers? Are the re regulators also willing to take action in response to misconduct when they occur in these types of areas? But on the whole, the idea of consumers being able to get the questions that they've got answered efficiently and quickly is only going to help them make better decisions around their financial product. There are some recommendations in terms of superannuation funds being able to help their members. The recommendations are that superannuation funds should be able to provide more advice to their members around uh, transition to retirement and in line with the retirement income covenant. And they're going to be able to take into account a broader set of circumstances, including the, their family situation and social security entitlements, if they're relevant to the advice. All of us have seen advice that may not have been in the best interest of the client because of the narrow definition of what superannuation funds can take into account. And so then being able to take into account a broader set of circumstances is going, only going to have, help clients ensure that they get better advice. The reality is superannuation is a mandatory saving obligation on, on all Australians and ensuring that everybody is able to get the right answers in terms of making the right decisions around their superannuation is critically important. So I think there's, while we know that there is concern around this recommendation, in a situation where superannuation is mandatory, we think it's appropriate that at least consumers can get the right advice, make the right decisions around their superannuation products. To allow this to happen, collective charging for advice fees would be allowed, but there would be restrictions on collecting, and some of the restrictions around collective charging would be removed. Uh, trustees would be given the power to decide how they charge members for personal advice, but remembering that they've got a duty to ensure that all services offered by the superannuation fund are offered in a fair way for all members, it'll be interesting to see whether or not many move down that collective charging method or keep going with a direct fee for the advice that's provided. So in summary, there is a number of potential quick wins that have come out of this quality of advice review, removing fee disclosure statement obligations, removing reporting obligations in terms of the design and distribution obligations, the ability to deliver FSGs in a more efficient way, single client consents for fees and ongoing uh, service arrangement um, fee consents, fixing the education standards for existing financial planners as well as creating new education standards for non-relevant providers and changes to advice documentation which mean you don't have to every time produce 80 to 100 page SOAs that we know are taking 10 to 15 hours and adding significant costs to advice deliveries. So there's a huge opportunity to embrace the current political optimism around the value of financial advice this will benefit consumers. This will fix a lot of the issues that we have been talking about for many, many years that are impacting our ability to provide advice to consumers in an affordable way. George is going to talk us through some of the next steps and what, how we are working with others for in terms of the implementation. Hi, thanks, Ben. Uh, yeah, so what I think happens now is a further period of consultation. Minister Jones has said that he wants to hear from key stakeholders, such as ourselves, from key members of the financial services industry, and then also from the community at large. Um, Michelle Levy has really done some great work with the Quality of Advice Review. While the FPA doesn't agree with every single last sentence that's in that final review, we do agree with it substantially or, or, or mostly in part, I'd suggest. So we're looking to do the same thing. We'll go back, we'll consult with um, our members, we'll consult with other stakeholders in the industry, and we're going to talk directly with government and other politicians and political leaders. So what follows now is a process. We don't know what that process looks like because, to be honest, the government hasn't laid out those plans. Usually at this point we'd like to tell you that we're going to submit a submission, but we don't know what that process looks like. Um, so we are still kind of playing fast and loose with some of the facts ourselves, as I think Minister Jones's office is. So what we're trying to do 
um, is simply mirror the process that um, is going to be taken by Stephen Jones. If there is an opportunity um, for more public feedback, we'll take that opportunity, obviously. Um, but we are trying to be strategic about how we engage with this process. We want the majority of the quality of advice review up, mounted, instigated um, as soon as possible so that some of those quick wins can see the light of day. But we don't have a process yet. Uh, I think it's fair to say that we were um, hoping for more of a formalised process to be shaken out of um, where we are at the moment, but we haven't seen that. Um, but we are uh, still pushing forward with support for the quality of advice review. Um, and that's when we meet with politicians of all sides, that's exactly what we're going to say, which is we support the majority of what's been put in the final review, um, not all of it, but we do want to see those quick wins. We think there's a couple of things uh, in there that around SOAs, for example, that we really can get up off the ground straight away and we'd like to see those instigated. Um, once we do have a more formalised process, obviously the members um, will be the first people to hear about it. Thanks, George. And so as George said, we would love to get your feedback, love to get your views, love to get your input on what you think of the quality advice review recommendations. Uh, there is a link to community in FPA today. Uh, this video will also be in community um, and we'd love to get your con your feedback, have you part of the conversation, get your input into what our response should be. Thank you for listening and if you've got any questions, as I said, let us know in community. Have a great day.